So I wanted to make a um, game where I'd have uh, pathfinding enemies that would be able to use the pathfinding function built into um, into Arcade to chase me around the map, as it were. Um, so I've done that, and I'm showing you here. You can see I've got this one that kind of follows me as I go around. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that, but also talk a little bit about the process that I went through, because I think that's the most important thing. If you're going to get good at making games in Python Arcade, you need to be independent. So I'm just going to try and, without doing the whole thing from scratch, show you uh, kind of what I did. Uh, so my starting point was these example code um, sections in Python Arcade, which are pretty good in many respects. Uh, and they've got things like, uh, where is it here? Pathfinding. So, I looked at this uh, and this helped me to work things out. But the problem with some of their examples is you kind of have to dig in amongst all of the other stuff, which I don't like. But that's fairly normal for working things out uh, when you're learning to program something. You, you can't find exactly what you want, but you have to find out what you need. So for instance, um, they've got a whole bunch of code in here, um, which is, this is about scrolling the screen around the player so you're not just restricted to the window that you've got um, you know it, it kind of moves with the, the player as you move around a larger map than you can actually see um, but I don't need that we'll do that later it's a good thing to have but I don't need it in this example so that's part of what you have to do is ignore the stuff that isn't relevant to you but what I found was the um, this stuff to do with paths uh, so with creating paths uh, which works um, but another thing I didn't like about this example is they put everything inside the on update here uh, so all of the, uh, the stuff to do with the player moving yep and the stuff to do with the enemy moving and the stuff to do with the scrolling is all inside this on update function which is kind of huge uh, so one thing that I've done is I've broken it out into a separate class so let's go and have a look at that Here's my um, my version. So what you'll see is uh, I don't start with class my game. I actually have this class for pathfinding enemy. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But let's go down to the my game. Um, my game. What does it do? Uh, the things that we need to know about in terms of uh, pathfinding. Uh, one thing I should mention before we get too deep into that. Um, I'm using a tiled map. I'm using uh, tiled to make a map. You would have seen I was just working in this little bit down here. We'll look at how to use tiled to make our own maps in the future uh, to save us having to manually position every single block. You just kind of draw on here with, with stuff. Um, we'll look at that later. So that's all of this bit. Uh, this is the normal make a player sprite stuff. So we we'll understand that. And here we've got this enemies bit. So I've made an enemy list with an arcade sprite list. We're used to that. And I make a pathfinding enemy. So this effectively spawns a new pathfinding enemy, which is one of these. So from a class, you make an object. So I make a new, um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Here we are. I make a new enemy from my pathfinding enemy class. And I pass it the picture that's going to use I'm having I used a bomb why not and I'm giving it a random position as well random dot and I'm using the width and height as we've seen with constants in the past and appending that to the enemy list uh, I also made it so that the player can't move through blocks so you basically use this physics simple engine which means that you have uh, collisions so a player sprite can't collide can't just go straight through a wall sprite so that's all straightforward and there's not much else going on in this area that's what i love this on update thing is really small uh, and all i've got is for enemy and self dot enemy list i update the path of it and then you've seen this before key presses key releases that's just managing the the player movement all right so just to recap then we're making a new enemy from the pathfinding enemy and appending it to this enemy list Let's go and have a look at this class. Now, this pathfinding enemy class does this slightly clever thing that it um, 
it makes itself from a sprite object. It's called in inheritance. So uh, we don't need to go in too deep. We just need to kind of understand that this is saying make a sprite from the normal sprite class um, with the same file name we've got. But also we can add a couple of extra things in there. So for instance, uh, for pathfinding, it needs a barrier list. And um, that's something that I've already passed into it. This wall list came through as part of the uh, when I made it. And that's from the map. You'll be able to find that down there. And um, uh, it, it needs a path. The path is what it goes down, which is basically just a sequence of points on the way to the uh, player. So it doesn't just come straight at you. It goes around objects. So um, this bit here about moving along the path, if we've got a path, is stolen, from, not stolen, is borrowed from this sprites that follow the player thing. Because I did, I started writing my own thing to just move to the next point along. And then I just thought, oh no, this is easier and better. It just works really well. So this basically, where am I? This basically just moves it along the path. Uh, this is what updates the path based on the new position of the player each time. Uh, I added this in because when I have lots of enemies, not just one enemy, it turns out that this calculate path function is quite expensive and you'd end up with lots of lag. That's only when you get to like 50 um, or 100 different enemies, which you might well want. So basically this is saying uh, if we choose a random number between 0 and 10 and we get 1, so 10% of the time, it updates the path for each one. Uh, so just to remind you what that looks like, we should have our one player who is running around, our one enemy is running around the path. Notice I can't walk into the walls. I can go off the edge of the map and it's not following me around. And you can kind of see that 10% behavior of updating and so on. It's kind of funny behavior, but you can tweak it with that the different percentage and so on. Um, now, Back to the spawning, which I think is the last thing I really want to talk about. Uh, what have we got? So in the init for the my game, I've got this spawns a single player uh, enemy, sorry, and appends it to the enemy list. So what I can do is I can say for I in range, say 50, and I can do that 50 times. So tab, put all of that lot inside that loop, save that and run it again and I should end up with 50 random enemies is it doing it it's doing it there we go so I've got 50 enemies following me around the, the course now all right so there's quite a lot that I've covered in this um, one video so I'll just recap so probably the main thing is I've broken out the whole pathfinding enemy into a separate class so that's all encapsulated in one place now. That anything to do with the pathfinding enemy, if I need to update it, I can come into here and fix it. Uh, this line here is super crucial. This is where we take that pathfinding enemy class and we make a new object from it. And um, I've set it up here that it passes at the wall list, which is comes from the map, uh, which is this mymap.tmx thing from here. And um, it uh uses that as, as it's basically the obstacles that it, it needs to get around uh what else did i do uh yeah i'll put that physics engine thing so the player can't go through the walls didn't need that just makes it better for testing purposes um and then there isn't an awful lot else going on so i hope that's helpful uh, i'm going to do another video as well which will be a simple adaptation of this with line of sight enemies as well